Hi, in today's episode of Ask Dr. Lynn, I am here in Chicago at the ASB Baking Tech. Pretty much looking around and seeing what's new. So um, it's been an interesting um, show with some good finds. Um, and I managed to talk to um, a, f- a few vendors on um, their new technologies. So basically, we have Lalaman with Flex Firm, JNK Ingredients with Sormate, Parados with Vivofil, Bay State Milling with HealthSense, Reading Thermal with their new humidity se- sensor and online classes, Diasna with their window mixer, Timely Products with a new line of clean leavening systems, and Mechatham with their M and S divider. So take a look at this and let me know how you feel. Hello, I'm here at the Lalaman Tabletop at 726 and we are going to talk about a new yeast innovation uh, with Dr. Philip. Right? Dr. Philip, Hi, how thanks you doing? for joining me today. Dr. Um, Man, so good. You t- said something about Flex Firm, which really interests me. Right. Because apparently this is a special kind of yeast that doesn't overproof. That's right. All right. So tell me a little bit about what is Flex Firm. Well, Flex Firm is a, is a yeast that, uh, it's a proprietary yeast. There's the application sheet here. That is owned by uh, Lalamund. And uh, the your uniqueness about this yeast is that it will change the way you bake completely. Why? Why? Yeah. Because this yeast is a non-GMO yeast. It's also a Saccharomyces cerevisiae, yeah, so it's really it's kosher. And we have it not only in terms of the liquid yeast, we have it dry yeast. But the unique thing about this yeast is that regular yeast depends on the maltose which is present in the flour. So it utilizes the maltose, produce carbon dioxide, texturize the bread. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. This flex from yeast cannot utilize maltose. So you're saying, well, what's the benefit of this? Well, since it cannot utilize maltose, therefore you have to add a little bit of sugar to your formulation. Right. You have to add add a little bit of sugar to your formulation. So it works best with lean doughs with up up to about one, two, three percent sugar. What happens with this yeast, flex firm, it will consume the sugar, and once it finished consumes the sugar, guess what? It stops. It stops proofing. What does that mean to you as a baker? Your product never overproofs? No, I don't believe that. Like, I overproof things all the time. Product never overproofs. I don't know if you can zoom in on this little on this okay. little graph here. All right, let's try that. Let's see if you can see the graph right here. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, and what about a graph? So the black line is basically regular yeast. It will keep on proofing and proofing and proofing. Uh huh. And the gray line is basically flex firm. Once oh. I utilize the sugars, it stops proofing. Oh, okay. So this is this is great for people who are in production. If you've got an automated system, your line is down, what happens is that you never lose your dose because the, the yeast itself stops proofing, it maintains an integrity. In fact, it can maintain an integrity for up to about 12 hours. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Um, because without of, overproofing. Without overproofing. And because of the technology itself, you, you, probably, you don't need a proof box. What? Yes! You can proof it at ambient temperature up to 24 hours. So we call this the social yeast. <laughs> it's a social yeast. Why is it a social yeast? Because it gives you back, especially for mom and pop bakery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to get up at four o'clock in the morning and miss the wife and then, and then says, I gotta go. You can, you can mix your product the night before and leave it out at ambient temperature Come the next morning and your product is ready. So no reefer. What? You kidding yes, me? Yes, yes, yes. This is the best kept secret oh here. Oh my god. We will revolutionize the way you bake. Oh my god. Yes, yes. That's amazing. Yes. And you know what? I'll tell you what, we also have one which is 
flex firm in pizza application. So therefore, oh things like God. pan pizza, it never overproofs. It never touches the lid of the pan. I get excited about it because I like it. I mean, if, if you're interested in this, get in touch with me. Okay, so uh, how would they get in touch with you? P. Lee Wing at Lollaman.com. So P. that's P for Peter, uh, Phil. P for Philip. L E E. L E E. W I N G at. At Lalaman. L A L L E M A N D dot com. com. All right, got it. Thank you so much Keep for joining me. Keep it short and Philip. simple. Right, right. This is an exciting innovation. Thank you for sharing Thank it with you. me. And here we are at the JNK Ingredient Tabletop uh, 704. Come by to learn more about natural occurring preservatives. Um, today, here with me today is Al. Hi, Lynn. Say hi, Al. How are you? Al, uh, you guys are the producer of Red Mate, yes. and it's one of the leading uh, ingredients for uh, in the baking industry, uh, cultured wheat. Um, what is your latest innovation? Well, thank you for asking. Thank you for spending some time with us at the booth today. Uh, our latest product is called Sormate Cake, okay? mm -hmm. and as opposed to a fermented product, it's actually derived from uh, plant and fruit extracts. So it's an extracted product. Um, its label is a natural flavor, okay, and it contains a high level of naturally occurring sorbic acid due to the fruit and plants that it's extracted from. This is it? This is it right here. Right, look. Sorme. Okay, so it, how is this, what is this replacing? Well, it would replace potassium sorbate and chemically uh, synthetic sorbic acid. So it's a sort of a revolutionary product where, as you referred to before, our bread mate line is our cultured wheat flour, which is used primarily in yeast-based baked goods, uh -huh. okay, to replace mm -hmm. calcium propionate and those types of products. Mm -hmm. But our sorbet cake can be utilized in sweet goods, chemically leavened products, where traditionally a baker would use potassium sorbate, which is salt and sorbic acid, or straight sorbic acid. But that's, those are artificial preservatives, where our sorbet cake because it's, it's a natural flavor and it's extracted from plant and fruit extracts, contains a, a, a naturally high occurring amount of sorbic acid. So therefore, uh, you can get mold prevention by using this product and labeling it as a natural flavor. Sorry, I'm bringing this a little closer because okay. it's really loud in here. Sure. And I want to make sure I get you on the mic properly. Um, what, what if, if someone doesn't hasn't done this before mm -hmm. the, the one of the most frequent questions we get is why just can't we use cultured wheat in cakes why do we need to okay. use sorme that, yeah. that's a great question it's the same reason why you wouldn't just use say sodium propionate or calcium propionate alone in a cake okay that's true. propionic acid is is very yeast friendly that's why it's primarily used in yeast raised right. products if you were to use a sorbic acid or a potassium sorbate unencapsulated in a oh, yeast raised product you would have problems. It would it would inhibit the yeast fermentation. You'd have less volume, less flavor development. But in a chemically leavened problem, we don't have in a chemically leavened product. We don't have that problem because we're allowed. We're able to use sorbic acid and potassium sorbate because there's no yeast in there. Right. And and the sorbic acid is a much more uh, effective universal mold inhibitor in a wider pH range and against various uh, microbes and, and wild yeasts and things like that. Um, and it's a more expensive product. The sorbic acid tends to be than the propionates, but they also you're looking usually for longer shelf life in a sweet good uh -huh. and the batter is usually more expensive than the dough. Right, right. So this is something where if a baker wanted to remove potassium sorbate and or sorbic acid from their label they'd be able to say no artificial preservatives added by using sorbate cake in lieu of chemically uh, synthetic sorbic acid or potassium sorbate. So take out potassium sorbate mm -hmm. and what do you put in place in terms of the ingredient label? You would you yeah. would add natural flavor. That's the labeling. This is natural flavor? That's a natural flavor. That's, that, you that's how it's labeled. You won't say anything like sorbic acid or anything like that? No. It does contain uh, a decent percentage of sorbic acid. If you're replacing potassium sorbate, we would suggest a three to four to one replacement. So for every um, one percent potassium sorbate or one pound potassium sorbate, we would suggest testing three to four pounds of sorbate cake wow. to get the equivalency of the, the, sor the free sorbic acid in the finished Very baked Very neat. Okay, um, that's 
that's awesome news. Yeah. Well, thank you so Looking much for coming by. Looking forward to this product. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're very excited about it yeah. because it's something that is, <laughs> it it's is. new and exciting yeah. and uh, we think with Clean Label is, is certainly the future and it's here Great. to stay. So it's something and that the Sweet Food Bakeries that can now benefit from. And if anyone has any more questions, go to jkingredients.com or call Al at 973. He's photobobbing my video <laughs> stream. <laughs> 973-340-8700. Okay, got it. Thank, Thank you, you, Lynn. I appreciate right. it. Bye. I am here at Parados, table 208 uh, at Baking Tech. And, ooh, guess who I found? It's Peter Reinhardt. Hey. Woo! <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Fancy meeting you here. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, man? Everything. Everything. We're... Well, first, I'm talking to my friends at Piratos, who are the sponsors for our Red Symposium. Oh, nice, And nice. I'm here looking to see if I can find some new speakers for next year's symposium. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. We should tile. I'll give you a few names. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, I got exciting news here. Um, this is Alejandro. Say Hello. hi. You receive an award. Correct. And what's the award for? So, we're very happy to announce that uh, one of our newest fruit fillings, Viva Field, won okay. the award for innovation for being one of the top fruit fillings that are preservative free. It's the first true preservative free filling in the market. Uh, we started promoting this product last year, which we have three flavors. We have, uh, we have apricot, we have blueberry, and we have blackberry. All right, question, can we taste it? Absolutely, you can taste it. All right, here you go. First so, tasting see. session at Baking Tech. I thought Tech. you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's have the raspberry. All right. Yes. Uh, do we have some spoons? Guys, nice. where are the spoons? We are trying to get spoons so that we can try yeah. the award-winning so preservative-free Jelly. No. no preservative. Uh, filling. Okay. Okay. Unofficial so, sample. Apparently the okay. spoons are done, but you can you can you can take it please. How about a thing how about a yeah, finger? You can, then you okay. can you can keep it. Alright. Well no spoons. We'll put this apart. That's good. What do you think, Peter? It's really nice. It's thick. Yeah, it's thick, but it's a filling and the flavors okay. just pop in your mouth, which yeah. are really like of course. So it's a baked stable filling. Um, it's preservative free, as I was mentioning, the first true preservative free filling in the market. Oh, we got some. I can see uh, filling, filling you. putting them in a Danish. So we have also apricots, yeah, and we have wild blueberry. So this is the raspberry. And here so, we have the what technology do you use to make it preservative free? So, can it's I part ask? Of, absolutely. So, yep. it's part of our process that we're following in our manufacturing facility in Pensoque. It's about having a full aseptic line to make sure that we can deliver on the water activity, but also making sure that we can manage the different elements of the process. So it has uh, up to six months of shelf life, and we have been very successful with it. Up to six months of shelf up life? Up to six months, yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when we talk about something like a uh, Danish, yeah, Maybe. but then once that you apply it, you have a shorter shelf life. Oh, so it's six, six months shelf life, once it's produced. Okay. Well, you okay, gotta eat got that Danish within 24 hours. Or just... well, <laughs> I don't know, it could be like a six months Danish. Well, I don't it's know. It's a frozen product, for sure. Three to five days, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, wow. so like, like uh, um, uh, jam filled cookies. Yes, jam filled cookies, open Danish, also filled croissants, anything that could be like pastries in general, that's like the perfect finished good for this. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, can we try the apricot? Absolutely. We got we, we got we got vehicles to test. Now, now we can. So. We got we got tasting <laughs> straws. <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay. Peter, tell us a little bit more about your Brett Symposium. Well, you know, um, Lynn, you were at the first one. Yes. And we had uh, about 180 people there for that uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's all about the future of bread. It's a presentation. It's kind of like a TED conference. People talking about things that are. That, that are not just commonly talked about. We want to push the envelope so that the folks who come or thought leaders in the baking industry can hear a little bit about what they need to be thinking about five right, years from now. Right, right. And so we did, did it two years in a row. We had so many really good topics come out of it uh -huh. that this year we decided to do an applications version okay. where it's all hands-on. We're going to have three concurrent hands-on workshops to apply some of the ideas that came out of the first year yeah. and come up with new products, with actual prototypes nice. in the sourdough category. We're working with Pirados closely on that. We have one on wellness, 
uh, Tom Gumpel, who was one of our speakers, leading a whole category on good bread is good for you. Yep, yep. And then our third category is working with local grains, heirloom grains, Ollie crop, which were big takeaways from the first two years, and making awesome. products out of them. So all that's going on, and then we'll have a few new presentations also. That's great. So we're just kind of build on what we've already started. Okay. And then next year we'll go back to the full uh, academic version, where we open it up for more people, and we have 10 more you know, dynamic presentations. That's awesome. So who's your sponsor again? Well, uh, Puratos is our platinum sponsor, our nice. name sponsor, so they're right on the sign with us. This uh, symposium is presented. It's a Johnson & Wales International Symposium on Bread presented by Puratos. Awesome. And then we have a number of other sponsors who also help us to pull it off. Because, you know, it costs a lot of money to do one of these. Yeah. And, and the ticket price doesn't cover all the costs, but, but we try to make it affordable for people to come. Absolutely. Well, thanks for sharing that. Thank you. I hope you can come and, again. Yeah, okay. And thank you. Uh, congratulations thank for you. winning this award. And if anybody wants to stop by and taste Ooh, this award-winning uh, uh, gems and fillings, come by 208 at uh, Baking Tech Marketplace. Thank you, Baker Pia. <laughs>
Here we are at the Reading Thermal Table at Baking Tech. So this is my first stop today and we are going to live stream this onto our LinkedIn channel and we are going to ask Reading Thermal today what's up and what's with the new products. All right, here we have Nick. Hi Nick. Hi, how are you? Um, Nick, you said that you have a interesting new um, thermal humidity profiler is that correct or? yes that's correct okay. so our brand new digital humidity sensor is uh is currently out for pre-release mm -hmm. um so with the new du uh, digital humidity sensor uh basically the number one issue that we had with our other humidity sensor was that it didn't handle steam generation very well that's true yeah um so this has anti-saturation technology in it Good. which allows you to measure humidity and uh, and basically any kind of environment. That's great. So do um, existing uh, Scorpion users have to buy new program, new, you know, data centers or, you know, portals? So existing Scorpion customers, there is a, uh, a digital humidity sensor trade-in program where they can trade in their, their old uh, standard humidity sensor with... Uh, uh, and also their humidity thermal barriers right. into uh, because with this there is no need for additional thermal barriers just for humidity. Okay. Uh, so basically, our standard range of thermal barriers will cover this as well. Very neat. And um, what kind of support comes with this? Um, so uh, as always, we have our um, you know our our email channel back to uh, to Reading Thermal, either Rich or Daryl Jonesburg or myself, okay. as far as support with this, but uh, in reality, uh, the the software, the way the way the software is set up, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's basically self-explanatory. It works a, a lot better than the other humidity sensor that we had, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you also don't need to preheat this sensor. Oh, okay. So, no use of a heating pad anymore, plug it into the data logger and run it. And um, what is what is this I hear about you offering some kind of training online that's so, new? So we also have a new online training program as well. Um, so there's no need for us to travel to your customer site in order to, to do the training. Everything is online. Mm -hmm. There's uh, there's 11 modules. There's over seven and a half hours of video. Wow. And uh, over 350 slides that go uh, together with the online training program. And that is for the entire Scorpion line or is it just for the human? Humidity. That is for the entire Scorpion line. Wow, yes. that's amazing. And how, how much are those modules? So the, the online trading program is uh, $3,500, and that's the same cost as what it would cost for us to do a two-day formal training program. Mm -hmm. So you have that, that training program. Uh, we send you a license, mm -hmm. and that license is good for 180 days. Once mm -hmm. 180 days is up, you email us back and we send you a new license so you have that for life. Uh, it, is also a, a, it is also a prerequisite for, uh, for any on-site training. So in order for us to come and do on-site training, you'd have to purchase the online training program first. That's great. And is there a limit to how many people can, um, can uh, be trained with one download? Or is it multiple people so, so in the plant? So we are doing it by location. Oh, by location. That's yes. Right. Okay. So by plant location, anyone that, that's interested in the Scorpion uh, training program, once the location purchases it, okay. um, all we need is an email address. Okay. And how long does that license last? Uh, for as life. long as yeah. they take. <laughs> yeah, it's just every 180 days it's going to renew. Oh, it's, you're nice. going to need to renew the password to it. So okay. just email us and we'll send you a new password. That's great. And if they want to learn more about this program, where can they go? Uh, you can go to readingthermal.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, up at the top right-hand corner, there's a button that says online training portal. Okay. And you can read more in there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am here at the Diasna's Tabletop um, 217 to figure out what's new with their mixing systems. And I see a couple packs of, um, a few packs of sourdough, so I'm gonna ask that question too. So come around, Ron. This is Ronald. And hello, Ronald. Um, what do you do here? Um, and what does Diasna do? <laughs> Diosna is, uh, you know, very famous in mixing. So we are the dough experts, and uh, 
we we have everything with uh, mixing and pre-dose and uh, just not only the equipment also the, the starter and the know-how okay. to, to work with the equipment. Great, can I put this down here? And put the camera down and let's take a look. Here, let's stand here. Okay. So, yeah, cool. And um, tell me a little bit about your mixing technology. What's yeah. so unusual about the Diasna mixer? Mm -hmm. Because apparently, dough expert meets, means right. something. Right. Right. Um, so we have the Wendell mixer. The Wendell mixer is the most selling product in the US. Mm -hmm. We uh, use for for pizza, lard, and for uh, flatbread and, and all all bread dough. Mm -hmm. And uh, the huge difference in mixing with the Wendell mixer is. Uh, you get a shorter mixing time uh, compared to a spiral mixer or horizontal. It's a half of the mixing time. Okay. Usually, mixing time is between five and seven minutes. Right. And wow. also, you get much more water into the dough mm -hmm. because uh, of, of the speed of uh, because of the speed of the mixing. Mm -hmm. And you get something like between five and eight point percent of water mm -hmm. more into the dough. Mm -hmm. And and this uh, this benefits uh, make it possible that you don't need a, a remixing chamber or something like that okay. because you get all the water direct into the dough. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So since you guys are dough experts, why sell these? Or what do you, do you sell these, or do you just provide uh, these? Uh, we just provide it. Yes, of course, we sell it, but we provide it more. Okay. And, um, we use it in our sourdough equipment. Uh, we have uh, different systems, uh, single system machines and big systems uh, for, for the industrial bakery. And uh, we supply uh, all the starter uh -huh. for the sourdough. Uh -huh. And we just have, we don't have only, we don't have only one starter. Yeah. We have uh, five different wheat starters. We have the classic. This is and, the classic, mm -hmm. right? And then, we have the soft. The soft. What is the difference between the uh, classic and the soft? Um, the soft is much more mild. Uh -huh. And if you don't want to taste the sourdough, you just use it. The benefits. Oh, neat. You use the soft, and uh -huh. the, the, the bread will be softer. Cool. You're a baker. I am. You sound I'm like a you're a baker. baker. <laughs> wow, amazing! A German master baker, yeah, right here. Yeah. Um, what is the the wheat it's, fruit? This is the wheat fruit. It's a starter for really. Food sourdough and it tastes like yogurt. Oh wow, and, that's neat. And then we also have the spelt, so you spelt. can work with spelt. Uh -huh. You can make a spelt sourdough. Uh huh. And the last and one. This, this is, is the rice sourdough. This is really heavy. Mm -hmm. This is like good stuff. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Right. Great. So if you're here at Baking Tech, stop by booth 217 and talk about sourdoughs, talk about mixing, and get a free knife. <laughs> They feel like the best knife ever, so thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs>
would say like an acid, like a natural occurring acid and a base. Yeah. So we definitely we can do things with say using like ascorbic acid and using coatings on the ascorbic to get your time release so it's not a uh, premature release, right, you get right, another right. release and so we've done things with that as well as using other different compounds too. Okay. Okay. Um, besides those kind of baking powder products, uh, what other products and services so do you the offer? The other thing we do a lot of is dough conditioners. So mm -hmm. we've done a lot in shelf life systems. Uh, basically, you know, with different shelf lives, enzymes yeah. come a long way. So we've been able to now have it where it works well in uh, high sugar doughs, mm -hmm. where it works with uh, low pH, so uh -huh. like in a rye bread or a sourdough bread. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have different things like that that really increase the usage. This is an extensive product line. It is. Awesome. Well, thanks, Trey. Thanks thank for you so stopping much. by my life today. All right, thank you. All right. Hello. Join me here at Macatherm at uh, Tabletop 214 um, at the Baking Tech. I saw an innovative um, dough dividing technology that I want to point out to you. Uh, this is for a high hydration um, kind of dough, so join me. We have Betsy here. Say hi, Betsy. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Betsy, tell me a little bit more about Mechatherm. Uh, Mechatherm is a French leader in industrial baking equipment. Uh -huh. We supply fully automated lines, mm -hmm. but we also supply uh, standalone equipment when needed. Okay, I see some turnkey solutions here, and I'm interested in uh, learning a little bit more about your dividing system. Um, well, Mechatherm launched actually three really good innovations last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a flexible oven, okay. we have a new handling system, and a new divider, which is the MNS. Okay. Um, so this one right here, yes, MNS, and tell me a little bit more about why this dough divider is unique. Um, you hear a lot in the industry about uh, stress-free or no stress. Uh, we go one step further and we say it's no stretch as well. No stretch and no stress. No stress okay. and no stretch. Okay. So um, it allows you to work with a very highly hydrated dough mm -hmm. um, to get a more premium product, artisan style, loaf, tin bread, etc. All right, good. Um, what is the volume and the output of this particular dough divider? Um, you can go up to 3,500 pounds per hour or 4,000 pieces up to, depending on size of product. Uh -huh. uh, size would be 10 ounce to about 2 pounds per. Okay. And um, with a baguette, you can also mold it? Uh, yes, you can have the divider followed by a block and right. you can also mold and deposit. And how, how accurate is the weight of this dough divider? Uh, plus or minus 3%. That's really good. Yep. We have a, how do you do that? We have a great system. So the dough bands are shingled together very delicately. Uh -huh. And we have a 3D reader system that evaluates the size and the shape of the dough band. And it automatically adjusts the uh, ultrasonic knife that gently cuts the piece. Each individual piece is after that weighted individually, mm -hmm. and this information is transmitted back to the blade already. Okay. If the, the piece is not with intolerance, it gets rejected, and because there's very little flour or oil used, you can actually reintroduce it right away into your hopper. So you have no waste, since there's no trim uh, okay. on the way we cut you have zero waste. All right, and that's really important when it comes to bigger dough sizes and how the volume changes with the beginning of the dough and the end of the dough. Absolutely. And how to get that really dialed in without getting any kind of loss in product quality. Also, if you have a stoppage for any reason and your dough stays in the hopper a little longer. Right, that never happens. <laughs> well, your first, your first piece will be rejected, but right. the system is smart enough to kind of yeah. figure out that we have a change here this has expanded and it's going to readjust so you'll be rejected right one piece. and that's really that's nice it. because uh, many times when I visit bakeries um, the dough the dough divider er, <laughs> the dough divider er, has to actually manually change the settings yes. right and so that's that's the, the cost savings of one person at the dough divider when you have this special system in the eye mm -hmm. going. Absolutely. That's absolutely radical. I love it. Um, thank you for inviting me to your booth today. My and pleasure. for more information, where can people go to? 
Well, we actually have a demo center that's available where we do have an MNS divider available for trials if you're interested to watch it. You can also go on YouTube. We have a Mechatherm section and the video is there. You can see it run and you can see how it works. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you have your American team here, Frank Ellenbogen and myself, Betsy Poupard. We're here to answer questions. You can call us. You can find our information on our website as well. Great, great. Thanks. And Betsy's information is going to be on this post, so link up with her. Thank you. Bye. Hi. That's all I have for the show. I'm sorry I can't get to all of you, but know that these interviews were actually scheduled before the show, and I had only so much time and so much I could do within the show. So um, in order for your technology to appear uh, within a show, I will be at IFT and IBIE. Please send your email requests to ask Dr. Lin at Wikipedia.com. All right, so um, I try to get as much innovation and, and as much technology I can get into my live feed. So sending me emails before the show will be of tremendous help. So until then, bakers, just if you have any questions, just Wikipedia it.